This is how to draw the classical labyrinth from a seed pattern. First, you want to begin about one third of the way up in your space, on your paper or even in your yard if you are drawing this full size for walking. And you want to draw a cross or a plus sign. And the two lines should be in equal length. And then in each of the um, quadrants that you've created, you want to draw a uh, turn or an L um, or an angle. That's what they're constantly called. And these also should um, be the same uh, size and reflective of each other. And then in the corner, draw four dots, uh, which are line ends. And this creates an, a square. Um, if we drew and connected the dots this way, a square that would be divided into f uh, fourths, right? So the plus divides it in half and the angles divide it in fourths and then the dots are the corners. So this is the seed pattern for drawing the seven circuit classical labyrinth. And then from the center of the plus or the cross, you want to go out, up and over either to the left or to the right. Now, um, which way you draw this uh, creates the center where your labyrinth ends in the middle and then you would retrace the design back out again. And by putting the center on the left, this creates a right-handed labyrinth where the entrance goes to the right. But if I drew this first one from the uh, top up and over to the right, then that would create a left-handed labyrinth um, where the entrance enters and the first turn is to the left. So because the majority of classical labyrinths were right-handed, um, I'm going to draw this going up and over to the right. And then you want to um, step out to the next uh, line and connect that up and over to the dot. And then you want to keep connecting whatever um, end point you find on the square up and over like a rainbow, right? So this is our next end point on the square. And you want to go up and over around and then you need to bring it back in to connect to the square again. And we're simply trying to maintain uh, equal widths, consistent widths of these circuits. So, you know, each of these pathways theoretically should be about the same width, um, but also be forgiving to yourself, especially if you're trying this for the first time, to um, have your path widths be consistent. So. Um, what's better is that you just uh, <clears throat> don't judge yourself too much. This can be a meditation as well uh, in non-attachment and, uh, you know, self-acceptance. And basically, <clears throat> you're going to finish by coming down, out, up and over, <clears throat> and all the way back to the bottom center. And that is the Seven Circuit Classical Labyrinth. You can see the seed pattern is in red. And then I connected the seed pattern with the black lines. And this creates a Seven Circuit Labyrinth where if you stand in the center, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pathways that surround it. So you have just drawn the oldest labyrinth that we know of. It dates back four to 6,000 years old. And there is evidence that it was uh, spread around the world by people um, learning the seed and then taking the seed design and um, showing it to other people and recreating the labyrinth in other lands. So it's kind of fun uh, to think that labyrinths spread throughout the world um, by seed. Now, another really interesting thing is, is if you want to draw a three circuit classical labyrinth, you actually use the same seed pattern of the seven circuit classical labyrinth, um, but you stop 
halfway through the drawing. So if I'm going to go up and over one, two, three, four, four lines make three circuits, and then I stop halfway through and I actually erase the bottom half of that seed pattern, then there is a three circuit classical labyrinth. So, you know, if uh, you want to draw the three circuit, just use the same seed pattern and you end up with a, um, what is the simplest labyrinth in the world and is actually the uh, inside half of the full seven circuit design. And then finally, if you want to draw an 11 circuit, you expand your C pattern by um, adding two more angles. Well, one, actually you're adding four more angles, two in each quadrant, right? So, um, it looks like this. And I don't have space here, but you would do the same uh, technique where you would go up and over and you would connect these dots and lines. And when you finished, you would end up with an 11 circuit labyrinth, classical labyrinth, which is actually the basis for the 11 circuit chart labyrinth. And what's fascinating here, one, two, three, four, five, is if you only draw half of the 11 circuit uh, classical labyrinth, and again, erase the bottom half of the seed pattern, then you will draw the five circuit classical labyrinth as well. So now you've learned not only to draw the seven circuit, but the three, the 11, and the five. So um, one last bit of uh, trivia and fun is that the three circuit classical labyrinth is actually shown in the uh, logo of the Labyrinth Society. So you can see that in the logo, the seed pattern is there and the top uh, four um, lines are connected and there is actually a three circuit labyrinth here that um, is in the logo of the Labyrinth Society. Okay, thank you very much. This has been Lars Hallett and uh, happy 20th anniversary Labyrinth Society.